right, guys, what's going on? I hope everybody had an awesome New Year's. Um, this is the last day of holiday block leave for myself. Actually, it's like the day after the last day. We had like a surprise uh, day off today. It's Monday, and uh, I found out yesterday that I was going to have today off too, so that was kind of nice. But hopefully you all have uh, set some resolutions for yourselves, things that you want to accomplish during uh, 2022, and... Uh, Hopefully, uh, nothing's stopping you from getting started accomplishing those goals right away. Me, myself, obviously, I'm still working towards BRC, um, so I am about to get a workout in for that. I've also started picking back up uh, macro counting um, starting today, actually. So I used to do this a lot. I used to macro count all the time. Like every day, I would keep track of uh, the calories I consumed. I would keep track of the carbs, the proteins, and the fats, even the fibers uh, and sodium, everything like that. So I've decided to start macro counting again. And uh, as you can see here on my app that I use, Macros Plus app, um, as you can see here, I have already taken 447 calories worth of just straight carbs with my carbo game because I'm, I'm getting ready to go on a run and start my workout. But the rest of my day, I've got 223 protein left, 467 carbs left, and 90 uh, grams of fat left. Okay, and that totals for me to be almost, uh, it's a little over 4,000 calories total for the day, which seems like a lot, but when you're doing this many miles and you're running as much as this, um, doing you know a whole lot of rucking and still doing strength and uh, muscular endurance training uh, as well like those calories that you're burning really adds up fast so um, you got to replace it and you got to replace it with the right thing all right so you can't just be you know eating don jelly donuts all day and, and thinking that's gonna work out for you um, because it's not <laughs> so <clears throat> the best thing you can do is really uh, get a good accurate count of of your macro split, try to figure out what's gonna be best for you and, and your specific training plan. For me, obviously I have a lot of carbs on here. Well, that's because I'm expelling a lot of energy and I'm doing a lot of running, so I'm gonna need a lot of carbs. I have a pretty high amount of protein as well. Um, that's because I really am aiming to recover as fast as possible. It's not that I'm trying to stack on gains or, or you know gain all this mass, it's just uh, my body's gonna need that much protein just to heal itself. And same goes with the fats. You know, fats are really good for healing as well. Obviously, you don't want to overdo it, but your body does need fat. Now, I'll give some like quick guidance. I don't want to get too far into it on this video, but I'll give some quick guidance on how macros should be split. Um, there's a lot of different macro calculators out there that you can use. Um, I would advise using uh, the Precision Nutrition Calculator. You just type that into Google, it'll show up. That one's pretty accurate and pretty solid. But typically you'll see people will use like a 30, 50, 20% uh, percent ratio uh, split. So that's like 30% protein, 50% uh, carbs, 20% fats, something like that, okay? Um, that's that's kind of where I'm basing my numbers off. They're a little, they're tweaked a little bit more than that, but that's that's kind of my starting point for my numbers. I think that would be a good starting point for most of everybody out there, regardless of the goals you're looking at. Um, even if you're out there just strength training and you're just trying to get the, the gains, you know, um, a lot of people forget about how important carbs are. No matter what, I can tell you, um, if you're doing macro counting appropriately, carbs are definitely going to be the highest uh, amount of intake that you're seeing when you're doing your macro counting. Okay, they should be, they should be at least 50% of the ratio of carbs, if not like 60 or even 65%. And then a good golden rule of protein to live by is consuming at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight um, every day. So for me, that's about 185 to 190 grams of protein a day. Obviously, I threw a little extra in there for my macro ratios because I'm using my muscles very often and I'm trying to repair. But like I said, that's a really good basic rule to live by. If you just don't want to do too much calculation, you just want to go by that. That's, that's a good starting point for you. You don't want to go too high on the protein because a lot of it you're just going to end up wasting. And that brings me to another point, um, another good rule to live by and something to understand is that the body can only digest anywhere between 50 to 60 grams of protein per hour. So when you're taking anything more than that, you're just wasting it. And that's another reason why you'll see bodybuilders or uh, space out their meals. They'll do like a lot of small meals throughout the day. That's because the body can only like digest appropriately a certain amount of 
of calories and macros at any given time. So they space it out so the body is continuously getting what it needs um, in a spaced out manner and it's not wasting anything that it's getting. So remember that when you're taking your post protein shake or whatever, um, I wouldn't do anything more than like 60 grams of protein in that shake because it's just not really doing much for you. All right, so that's my little spiel on macro counting for the day. If you guys wanna know a little bit more about uh, macros, just let me know if you're interested in the comments and uh, I'll make sure to talk more about the macro counting and uh, send some more tips your way um, that you can use for yourselves at home. So on the schedule today, I've got a six mile run. Um, I've also got five barbell complexes that I'm gonna do right when I get back from my six mile run. And then I have um, a couple like leg, sort of recovery workouts they're strength training but they're really geared towards recovery and i know you guys have asked me about that kind of stuff before so i'll make sure to show you those workouts but one of them is going to be a kettlebell monster walk and then the other one's going to be a high knee farmer's carry okay and those are going to be a little non-traditional you might not have seen those sorts of exercises before but i'll make sure to show them to you and i'll explain a little bit to why they're important for recovery and for uh, muscular endurance training and then one more thing i wanted to show you guys while i have you um, if in case you didn't know, cause I just recently figured this out. Actually, my wife actually, um, she bought me some new shoes for Christmas. Uh, the, the, the Brooks Glycerin 19s, really nice shoes, man. I'm, I'm really digging these shoes. Lots of cushion, lots of support. Um, feels like you're running on clouds. These are really good. Um, I do like Brooks a lot. I also really like Saucony a lot. Those are kind of like my go-to brands for shoes. But anyways, so you can even see I'm wearing Saucony socks. So, I mean, I like to rotate my shoes depending on the kind of running that I'm doing. If you're um, doing sprints, obviously you don't want to wear super heavy, bulky, supportive shoes. You want to wear something a little more sleek. And then if you're going for some longer miles and just working on overall endurance, obviously you're going to want more cushion um, and a little more room in the uh, in the toe box. So like, it just depends on what you're doing. You got to switch out your shoes. But anyways, my wife bought me these shoes and when she did, she told me about um, a heel lock or an ankle lock. You might hear it two different ways. And I never actually knew what that was or even knew what these extra holes were on the size of your shoes, to be honest. It's, it's crazy because um, I've, you know, I've done a lot of marathons, I've done a lot of ultra running, but I'm, I'm kind of like a, hey, I'm just gonna throw my shoes on and go kind of guy. But hey, I tried out this, uh, this ankle lock and it is awesome. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it real quick and you should try it for yourself and see if you like it. It really does help um, form the shoe to your foot a lot better. So let me show you how to do this. All right, so lace up your shoe how you normally have it laced up. And then with these holes that are normally left unattended, you're gonna wanna put those laces back into those holes and leave a small little loop hanging out, okay? You do it on both sides. All right, so now I have my two little loops. Now I'm gonna cross the laces back over in front of the tongue. Just a nice little cross and stick the laces back through the loops from the top and then tighten. And you can see how much more locked in my ankle is now just from doing that. And you can tighten the loops down however you need to do it, just like regular shoelaces. You can adjust it to however the feel you need, but this really does make a lot of difference. And I also think that's why a lot of times running shoes will come with longer laces because they expect you to do that. See, look, now my laces are perfect. <laughs> Who would have thunk? But yeah, so that is the heel lock or the ankle lock. I've seen it called both names. Um, but yeah, awesome. Game changer, man. I definitely would recommend you go ahead and give that a shot. I actually have had two off days, which is crazy. I can't even, it sounds weird, but I can't remember the last time I had two consecutive off days from uh, PT. <laughs> but I needed a name. My body was hurting real bad. Um, I was feeling really stiff. I think I was teetering on overtraining. It's really hard to balance uh, overtraining and getting everything just right uh, when you're training for something like the best range of competition. Because uh, there's just so much that you have to train for. And especially for me, I, mean, I only have so much time to get, to get right. And so I'm packing in a whole lot of things, a whole lot of exercise into a small period of time. And I really am doing my best to avoid overtraining, avoid injury, and still get the very most possible from my training. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a challenge, you know? But it doesn't mean it's impossible, it's just something that you gotta pay attention to. And, you know, I tell you, anytime, there are plenty of days where I feel like tired before I even start working out, or I'm sore and I still go work out. 
You know, so I'm not going to say if you feel tired or sore, don't work out. But if you feel like genuinely unhealthy or, you know, or the moment you start running, you feel like you're going to get a Charlie horse, then that's a good sign that you might need to just take a day off. Okay. If it's so bad that like you, you are teetering on that point of actually breaking yourself or making yourself sick, that's when you know, okay, no shit. I'm on the verge of overtraining. I need to go ahead and dial it back. Maybe just take a day off, um, eat a little extra food, drink a little extra water, take a knee, that sort of thing. Overtraining can be difficult to recognize, um, especially if you're like a hard charging kind of person, but it is really important to look out for because there are some serious problems that can arise due to overtraining. You can actually be doing more harm than good uh, to yourself if you are caught into an overtraining cycle. So just make sure you're looking out for that. All right, guys, six miles. I'm gonna go knock this out and I'll come back to you. Man, so I had to go straight back after I left you to get my beanie because it is freezing today. It's like 40 degrees, raining, windy. It's a good day for a run. Good day for a challenge, you know? But check it out, guys. I want to show you this real quick. I know a lot of you guys might be out there like holding yourselves back from running because you might not have the proper terrain for running. Well, this is where I run most of the time. It's on a busy road, 55 mile an hour speed limit. And what I normally do is I'll run like the majority of it on the side of the road like this. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then if the uh, terrain gets a little too rough or too uneven, I'll just scoot it back over onto the road. And I like to go against the traffic because I can see when cars are coming from a distance so I can just move off the road and get out of their way. I always say this, the majority of your running should be on soft surface, so off-roading like this. You should really try not to run too much on the sidewalk because the sidewalk is the hardest surface you can run on. Like concrete is the worst. Even asphalt like a street like this is gonna be better for you and softer than running on the sidewalk. So try not to run on the sidewalk too much. Just scoot off the side of the road, even if you're running around your neighborhood, and just run in the grass. If you do that, you'll be able to run a lot further. You'll be able to build endurance a lot easier, and you'll have less pain in your legs. Simple as that. Okay. I turn this down on my headphones. All right, so six miles, a little over six miles, nothing wrong with that. A little extra ain't gonna hurt us. Uh, and in 44 minutes, just over 44 minutes, average pace was seven minutes and 16 seconds. So not too bad, not too fast, not too slow for myself, good and moderate. The rain and cold definitely added a little bit more of a challenge for me, but that's good. We need all the challenges we can get. I also feel like maybe I just got a cold or something. I mean, I'm vaccinated, so I don't think it's the, the cold that shall not be mentioned, but uh, I think I got something because I was like hacking up shit, you know, wasn't really that good. But hey, we got it out, got it out of our system, feeling a lot better now. Nice little 10K to warm us up for the day. Now it's time for the real workout. Also, before I forget, I mentioned this in another video, but I am on Strava. So if you're, if you're curious on following me on Strava, it's just Gritty Soldier. I'm on there and you can follow what I'm doing. I, I usually always use Strava. Every now and then I'll use my Garmin watch, but like typically I'm running with my phone and I'll use Strava because I just think it's the most accurate. Um, also, I noticed since my last video, I put that out and I, a whole bunch of people started following me on there, which is awesome. Um, that got me thinking, uh, that I might make a group and, and put out some challenges for everybody and make it kind of like a community thing if once I can figure out how to do that. About a year ago, I actually had a group on Facebook. Um, that was before I got zucked for like no reason, before Gritty Soldier got zucked for no reason. Um, that was called March for a Purpose. And we had about 500 members on there that would just do uh, ruck marching challenges and, and we would get uh, special unique patches made for completion of those challenges and ship them out to everybody that completed it and they would just send me screenshots of their Strava or their Garmin to show proof that they did it you know and I'm thinking we could probably do something similar to that 
using the Strava app, if I can figure it out, um, you know, make some group challenges and make little uh, collector's patches um, for each challenge that you finish, all right? And I used to also um, gather information from the group members on how the design of the patch should look, so on and so forth. So it really was a community thing. It was really awesome and it was for a good cause. We would also raise money for different charities. Um, we did the Care Coalition once, um, you know, say Jude, we did a lot of that kind of stuff. So it was really cool. So if you guys are interested in that, um, please let me know in the comment because I'm, I'm really trying to gauge if, if that's something worth doing um, and it's something that everybody would be interested in. So let me know. All right, so let's get this workout in. All right, guys, so I'm gonna do five rounds of the barbell complex. A barbell complex, one round is six each of these exercises back to back. It's the deadlift, uh, bent over row, hang, power clean, front squat, uh, push press, back squat, and push ups, okay? And then, again, those are just back to back, so you wanna pick a weight that you can manage to do for all those exercises. Um, for me, I'm gonna do 95 pounds, so that's a 25 plate on each side. Um, and do those back to back and then I'll rest for two minutes in between um, Each round. Okay, so this is a pretty good smoker I have a video on uh, my channel that shows you how to do it But obviously I'm about to do it right now for you guys too just to show you what it looks like and I would highly advise you give this a shot um, If you're looking at building muscular endurance. All right, so here we go This radio pops in. I drop this, turning back the clock to watch it. I cop it, so knock, knock, come on this. I'm hot, bitch, like a hot bitch. The top I it. lock in, I got this. Radio drop this. Hot shit, just watch this. I fucking promise. Too uh, lit, do not miss. Your chance to cop this. Will you capture it? Or just let it slip? Oh, I say I wanna be him, cause my rap is tight. No, really, they just give a fuck that I ain't black. I'm white, I'm not anyone else, man. I'm one of a kind. So sit back, relax, and listen one more. More time. I said I got this, none of this radio pop shit I drop this, turning back the clock to watch it I cop it, said knock knock, come on this I'm hot bitch, like a hot bitch to stop it I said I got this, none of this radio pop shit I drop this, turning back the clock to watch it Alright, so that was one round, that'll definitely get your heart moving And it's a good like full body workout routine So definitely give that one a shot uh, I got four more rounds to go, I'm gonna rest two minutes in between and then I'm gonna do the kettlebell monster walk and the high knee uh, raised lunges to show you guys what that looks like, which again is something I very much encourage you to give a shot if you're doing a lot of work with the legs, okay? Especially like putting on miles, a lot of rucking, a lot of running. So I'm gonna finish these uh, barbell complexes up and then we'll get into that real quick. All right guys, so the kettlebell monster walk. This one's gonna be really good for uh, like to tack on to the end of a workout, especially if it was heavy on the legs, you know, if you just did a wrong, long run or a long ruck or a really heavy leg workout or whatever, this is something that you should probably look at uh, integrating on the back end of a workout like that. It's gonna really help release some of that tension in the hamstrings and help you build uh, stability um, in the entire leg structure, okay? It's gonna help work some of those tweaker muscles that you wouldn't normally work doing your main lifts like squats, uh, or lunges or something like that, okay? Now the best way I can describe this exercise is it's kind of like a walking RDL, okay? So you're gonna grab some kettlebells, something that's gonna be somewhat challenging to you, but not too challenging, okay? Because this is more about recovery and stability, right? So something that you can manage, some weight that you can manage, and you're just gonna do a walking, you're gonna walk, keep the legs slightly bent, and then bend forward like an RDL. And this is really going to help you to ooh, get that good stretch in the hamstring, build hamstring strength, and build overall stabilization in the legs and the torso, which is really important for a hybrid athlete, really for anybody. <laughs> this will also help out a lot with the uh, lower back pain, like the sciatica pain that you might get. I know a lot of you army guys probably deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. This will help you out tremendously to pull out that, uh, that pain that you get in your lower back. <sighs> Again, you wanna do this on the back end of your workout. All right, now the high knee farmer's carry. This is another really good one to tack on to the end of your workout. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show it to you anyway. 
I'm going to be doing this for uh, four sets of 50 meters. Um, so I'm going to go outside and do this, but because it's so windy and rainy right now, I'm just going to give you guys an example in here in the, in the garage, in the gritty garage, just to show you what it looks like so you can try it yourself. All right, so this is what it is. So you grab your kettlebells. Again, I'm just going to grab my 40 pounders, just like you would for a farmer's carry. And the only difference is instead of, your, instead of a walk, all right, you're going to do high knees. All right, this is gonna help you stretch out your legs, build some extra endurance and stability and dexterity. And believe it or not, it's actually really good for the core because it requires a lot of good core stabilization to get this exercise done without swinging all over the place. You'll see what I mean if you give it a shot yourself. Kind of a good solid twist on the conventional farmer's carry. You want to keep nice and straight, nice solid core as you do this. And after 50 meters, this, this will catch up to you, man. I'm telling you. I need farmer's carry. Give it a shot. All right, guys, so that was my best ranger workout for the day, for today. Um, that took me about, with the run and the uh, strength training, oh, it took me about an hour and a half, okay? And that was with like, taking a few moments here and there to get the camera out uh, for you guys. So for all you army guys out there, um, you could potentially fit a workout like that in uh, for morning PT, okay? You just gotta get right down to it. Don't waste any time and just focus on the workout and you could squeeze a lot of workout in, in an hour and a half. And don't forget how important uh, active stretching is and static stretching is at the before and, and back end of your workouts. You guys saw me before I was on a run. Um, I was doing my active stretching as I was talking to you. You know, again, that's more like a shakeout type exercises. You know, you're just kind of swinging your legs out, loosening up the core, loosening up the hamstrings, especially um, twisting out the ankles, things like that, just to get all the tweaks out so you don't, you know, injure yourself while you take off running. And always ease into your run. You don't want to just take off at a, a full out sprint um, when you start doing your run. You know, you kind of want to ease into it, gauge how you're feeling that day, and make sure that your body is ready for whatever uh, training you have in store for it for whatever given day um, is on the training schedule. And that especially is true for sprint days. If you're doing sprints, you need to be warming up for at least like 10 minutes before you actually do your sprints. Go out there and just do a nice, you know, definitely do your active stretching. Go out there and do like a 10 minute uh, jog, warm up, and then do your sprints, okay? Make sure you're loosened up. And on the back end, definitely make sure you're doing your static stretches. Um, I have a video for that here. I'll put it like right here. Um, for static stretches, the same routine I do all the time. Um, and you wanna do these stretches like this uh, for at least 30 seconds to a minute per stretch, okay? You really wanna pay attention to the stretches because if you're not stretching appropriately, you're, you're just begging for injury over the long run. And you're actually losing out on a lot of uh, gains if you're not stretching out the, the muscles right. You're not, you're not allowing them to extend properly. You're not allowing them to begin the healing process properly, uh, so on and so forth. So stretching is really important. You gotta do it. And that doesn't matter what your training goals are. It doesn't matter if you're a power lifter, a bodybuilder, an endurance athlete, just a runner, anything. You really gotta make sure you're taking your stretching seriously, okay? So I've got a little more than a month left before the BRC tryout commences. I haven't heard anything back from my command yet, um, but then again, we've been on leave for the last two weeks, so um, should be going back to work tomorrow. I'll see if I can ask about it and make sure I'm still um, going to be able and eligible to go to the tryout for Best Ranger. It is one of my top goals of early 2022 and uh, I'm going to do everything within my power to make it happen. And for now that is making sure that I am trained up to 100% and physically ready to take on the tryout which um, I imagine is going to be very intense and there's going to be some steep competition there just because of the unit that I'm part of and who I would be competing on behalf of uh, this year. So it should be a good time. I'm gonna keep training hard and uh, keeping the right mentality for this and staying motivated. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my stretching. I'm gonna focus on that, make sure I do it right. If there was any questions you had of information that I dished out during the video, please drop that in the comments. Um, I do try to get to each and every comment. There has been a lot lately, which is great. Don't stop doing that. But if I miss you, you know, it's, it's no offense. I just didn't see you. That's all it is, okay? Sometimes some slip through the cracks, okay? But I do try to get to every single comment in some way because I very much appreciate all the support on the channel. 
If you guys have any advice of your own regarding any of the information I gave out on this video, please drop that in the comments as well for everybody so we can help out the community. That's what this is all about. And besides that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my stretch on. I got nothing else for you today, and I'll see you on the next one.